we are let's see here computer's a little uh okay we're live we're recording i'm with mike from coin cards how are you mike pretty good how are you i am well sir i uh i i was just gonna say i hope the internet and everything kind of holds up for us but let's get started mike so uh thanks for joining me first of all i mean what a crazy week uh week and a half it's been in crypto land um you know elon musk hey you saw that you know everybody's kind of getting on board with the whole bitcoin thing um hey man so i usually start with kind of where we met i think we were kind of retracing our steps right before the call so it was i think it was at mars you were saying right in 2015 at one of the events in toronto was one of the first times we touched base um yeah was that, yeah. that true? yeah i think it was uh 2015 2014 something like that um it was an event at mars that you were holding i believe it was supposed to have um charlie shrem coming in and mm -hmm. then for whatever reason, he had to cancel last minute. I think this might have even have been before he went to jail. Um, I think it was after, wasn't it? I, I don't remember. I don't remember. No, I'm pretty sure it was after. Because I, 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 I don't know if I want to talk about why he couldn't come, but I think it was related. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I, I came out for that. And then I was kind of disappointed that he wasn't there. And I was just like, oh, well, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, and yeah, did so he? I, did he did he did show up in robot form? Did he not? I know it wasn't the same, but yeah, I think I think <laughs> one of those little like those iPads that like, kind of like walks around on yeah. the stage kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely not the same thing. Um, I, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've actually. Oh no, I have met Charlie. I've met Charlie once. Uh, he's uh, he's a big inspiration. Um, what is going on here? Okay, so we're still good. So, so, and then, and I think another time we touched base around, uh, you, I think it was 2018 or something, right? Another event that we did, you were, you guys were one of the sponsors. I think it was or... the winter of 2017. 2017. Um, yeah, I think it was just right at the peak. It was like where everybody was super interested in crypto. Everybody wanted to get into it. Um, you know, coming from, from Vancouver, we went out to Toronto and it was a whole other world because I guess there's so many like Toronto is such a financial hub of Canada that it was just like so many like financial people were there. Like, how do I get into this crypto? How do I make money doing this? And, you know, one of the most common questions we got asked is how much Bitcoin do you have? And it's like, I don't know, man, how much do you have in your bank account? Like, <laughs> I literally had, I think like, I won't, I won't call her out, but like a close family friend, a family member asked me the same thing. I was like, well, how much money do you have in your bank? She's like, oh, yeah. oh. she's like, wait, but Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, you know, one funny thing on that note, um, like for the log, you know, I've been doing Bitcoin events kind of forever, like since 2011, I think 2012 or something in India, then in Toronto and all over. And one of the things I was going to say is that, like, I remember at one point, you know, it was kind of like blockchain, not Bitcoin. Remember that trend? Like, oh, yeah. and, 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 and I mean, I'm, I'm like a Bitcoin, I, I consider myself a Bitcoin maximalist or a hardcore Bitcoiner. Um, but at the same time, I, I'm, I'm, I can be a bit of a chameleon. And so I remember one of the ideas a buddy came up and came up with was, why don't you just name these events, you know, blockchain something like blockchain impact. And that's what we did. And then we, but we'd stack the stage with Bitcoiners like Max Kaiser and Tone Vase. <laughs> So it was a bit of a, uh, I don't know what the word Trojan horse, if you will, but you know, to each its own, I guess. Um, but anyway, so I think that, that it's fun talking about those old days uh, when events were, you know, a thing. <laughs> yeah. It sucks I guess. right now being stuck at home. Hey, I where, you just say you're in Vancouver? Yeah. Yeah. So I like your background, by the way. Super cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm on Twitter all day just talking about Doge. But it's just a fun thing to do. Like, it actually pisses off a lot of people. And that's kind of what I do. Like, I just troll them. I'm like, yeah, let's pump Doge today. And just, but I mean, I'm a Bitcoiner at heart. Like, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. I, I hold one other coin, and that's Dogecoin. And I have a little bit of it. But you can't be in the Vancouver scene and not be a Dogecoin something. Like, it's just, it's part of our scene here. Dogecoin is so integral to Vancouver. Yeah, man, I think at the end of the day, look, I mean, I always say is like, as much as I love Bitcoin, I'm more a freedom maximalist than I am like a Bitcoin maximalist. Like if, yeah. if God forbid Bitcoin dis disappeared tomorrow or they found some flaw or whatever, I, I would still be trying to fight for freedom on every front. I just think Bitcoin's our best chance. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, Dogecoin, all these things are cute and fun and people should be able to do whatever they want. I think to some extent, you know, like, why not? Like I have, exactly, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so so uh, as I was telling you, so one of my kind of, I don't know, obsessions, I don't know, you've probably seen a few of my videos here. I've been, I think I'm on episode, this will be 76 or something where I'm, 
I, okay, so I, my whole kind of like recent saying is, is that Bitcoin is nothing more than ones and zeros. It's really just a culmination of all the people that choose to kind of build on Bitcoin, right? Like whether you're a core developer or a YouTuber or an entrepreneur or whatever, a professor. I mean, there's like, there's just so many people in this space. And so, um, so I'm really interested in not so much in the all-time high conversation uh you know I'm, I'm down with that as well but more so like the stories like of the people that you know that i consider to be heroes or whatever in this space um and so yeah so so just curious where, where you know some people lately they've been starting with like great great grandparents which which i dig or they start with their first job i mean i really don't care man where, where, where does your story begin for you um i don't know man i i grew up on computers um so i was you know a 13 year old computer nerd who got my first CD burner and I was like, oh, this is so awesome. You know, we, <laughs> I can borrow CDs from my friend and just make my own, you know, you know, super illegal, but you know, we didn't know back then he was a 13 year old kid. It was just like, whatever. Um, and then, you know, going on the chat rooms, started going to the IRC channels, going into all these like hacker type channels and just kind of seeing, oh, what's going on with these guys? What are they doing? Um, so that's kind of where I got my start. Um, and then from there, I got into BitTorrent and, you know, just all the peer-to-peer -peer decentralized type technologies that are, I guess, now 20 years old. Um, and that's kind of where I got into, like, freedoms and, you know, privacy and learning about how to stay anonymous on the internet when I want to kind of thing. Um, yeah, so then fast forward, I got, you know, I, I graduated got a normal job just at a warehouse somewhere. Um, but always kind of had that love for computers. Did, did you study something technical or did you, because you knew computers, you kind of went the other way with your education? Um, so I didn't actually get my college education until I was actually working full time. Mm. I kind of just did like the part-time route. Um, so I ended up getting degrees in um, web development. Cool. Like that. Yeah. Um, never really used them, just kind of found it interesting. It was like, hey, I want to go I want to learn, right? Like my big thing has always been kind of continuing education and just always trying to learn something. Um, yeah, so then uh, I believe in 2013, I was uh, looking at actually coding boot camps because I was like, I'm going to get back into coding. And one of them had a lunch and learn with a Bitcoiner. And I was like, okay, Bitcoin, yeah, I, I know a little bit about that. I'm going to go check it out. Um, so I did, and I was like, whoa, like, this is awesome. This is, this blows my mind. Um, I think I was the only one in the room. Everybody else was like, this is crazy. This guy is not up on stage kind of thing. Um, but I was the one that was like, yeah, this is awesome. I got to talk to this guy. So I went and talked to him, found out that there was a local meetup group in Vancouver, uh, started going to those meetups, and that's kind of where I landed with Bitcoin. And this is around 2013, you said? Yeah, 2013. So just curious, um, you know, what, what was, was money one of those things that you, I mean, computers, it seems like was definitely kind of like a, a bit of a common denominator uh, uh, in terms of like my youth as well. But in terms of like, what was your relationship with money? Was it pretty like, don't even care because uh, well, your type of deal or were you, were you questioning things well, around that? At, at the time so, I had a few um, a smaller businesses that I was kind of working through, just kind of playing here and there. Um, I was actually accepting Bitcoin at the time, but I was getting bit paid to cash it out because I was like, some crazy people want internet money to spend. Yeah, cool. I get Canadian dollars at the end of the day. I'm happy. Um, but I was starting to have problems with PayPal. Um, and then our credit card processor was starting to have problems with them. They were just taking large amounts of money. And I was like, this is nuts. Like, why can PayPal just go ahead and freeze somebody's account for six months? Um, you know, I was just like, this, this doesn't make any sense. So I saw Bitcoin as a revolution to internet payments at the time. And I was like, this is going to be awesome for the internet. Like, this is going to be the tool that merchants are going to want to use because they're going to want to be able to not have chargebacks. It, it starts putting the onus back on the customer to do their due diligence and being like, hey, I know who I'm sending money to. Cool. Let's be done. So interesting. So that was kind of your... I don't know, I don't want to call it your aha moment, but like your first, you know, piece of, you know, you were like, okay, this Bitcoin thing actually solves a problem um, yeah, and maybe exactly. it's got legs. So curious, so how does your, I don't know, kind of your thesis around Bitcoin uh, evolve over time? 
Um, so obviously I run coin cards, which is meant for people using their Bitcoin. Mm. Um, so I still believe that Bitcoin is going to be the internet currency. Um, I'm kind of anti hodl if that makes sense. Um, so I, I have the, you know, school of thought that Bitcoin is a savings, but it's also a checking. Like it can be both. Your fiat money has, you have a checking and you have a savings. So why not both, right? Um, I don't see it as an investment. I know it obviously goes up in value, but eventually that's just going to dry up and it's going to be stable. Um, yeah. Hey, just, just because you brought up coin cards already, do you want to maybe give people like a bit of a, uh, you know, feel for what coin cards is? Cause there's probably a lot of people around the world too, even maybe who don't know. And, uh, I don't want to assume that they do. Yeah, sure. Um, so coincards.com, uh, it says .ca here, but that's, <laughs> we've moved to .com. Um, we're a Bitcoin to gift card exchange service. Um, primarily, we take Bitcoin, but we also do take Litecoin, Monero, um, Dogecoin, a few other coins. Um, so basically, our goal is to let people live off of their cryptocurrencies. Um, so as the movement grew uh, back in 2013, 2014, we noticed that there wasn't a lot of ways to spend your Bitcoin. And that's what drew me into it. I was like, this is, has to be a crypto like it has to be a currency for the internet it has to be something that people can go and spend so i was like i'm going to start a business that we're going to send out gift cards i'm going to buy the gift cards for people and they can send me crypto and they can live off of that so you know that's that's where we started that's where we are now that's where we're continuing to grow hey um i, I hate to do this to you but like have you ever heard of bit refill <laughs> yeah because um, uh, i interviewed him uh, like maybe a couple weeks ago but like I, I, is it kind of that for Canada or are you guys global or can you kind of, I don't know, just. Um, so we were until yet or until last year, just for Canada. Um, we did move into the States last year. So we are Ooh. growing quite fast in the States. Wow. Okay. Um, we're planning on going to the UK. Um, mm. So our philosophy has been service the hell out of one market, make sure we're the best in that market mm. and then try to slowly expand. Um, Got it. Got yeah, it. so I don't want to go into like a hundred different countries and be horrible in all those countries. I want mm. to go into one or two markets, be awesome at those markets, and then you know move on to the next one, kind of thing. Makes sense. Makes so, sense. So, 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 sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. At its essence, yeah. so you you can live. So you are pro hodl in the sense that you know you can live in on Bitcoin with the comfort of knowing that you can get gift cards to buy stuff uh, without having to have a ton of money in your you know I don't know fiat, I guess. Balance, yeah, exactly. No? Like I'm, I'm basically pro all in on Bitcoin. Um, I love it. <laughs> so I would say that, I would I say that the, the HODL people, they do, you know, they're a little different because they still live off of fiat. I don't want to live off fiat, right? The fiat I want to live off of is gift cards because that's still a private untraceable way of doing business. So you go into like a, a superstore with a gift card. They don't ask for your name. They're just like, okay, cool here, have your groceries, you know, gift card, boom. Whereas if you use a visa, they're going to, they automatically have your name. They have all your information, right? Or visa at least has your information. They know what groceries you're buying, where you're shopping. I don't like that. <laughs> I like having control of my own life. Oh man, I love it. I love it. Uh, okay. So interesting. And then the, okay, sorry, just, just to be even more clear. So the cards, are these like virtual cards or something on some app or on, on a website or are they physical cards you go to a store and buy just to be clear? Um, so we actually offer both. Um, so we have digital cards, which we will email to you if you purchase them from our website. And then we have physical cards, which you can order on our website and we'll mail them out to you. So that's kind of, that's part of our, our value add too, is that we actually have physical cards, which a lot of our competitors don't have the physical cards. Um, and can you give people examples of what kind of merchants and by the way, I probably, probably jump in the gun because I know it's more about the story, but I'm just super excited yeah, no. about this. So um, yeah, I mean, I mentioned Superstore, like you can buy a digital card for your groceries. Okay, beautiful. Um, <laughs> Game over. It's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> um, Esso, like we have a partnership with Esso, so you can go buy your gas. You can buy your smokes if you're a smoker. You can buy gum and whatever you want with an ESO card. Um, you know, Uber Eats, we have an Uber Eats um, partnership. So you can order your food, DoorDash, um, pretty much anything you can think of we have available. I think we have about 500 um, merchants in Canada, about 350 in the U.S. 
Interesting, interesting, yeah. interesting. And you know, the thing I love about this uh, most, Mike, is, is that it creates a direct relationship between, um, you know, those who are Bitcoiners and merchants in the world, as opposed to like even having, um, you know, banks or anyone in the loop. So like from yeah. the from the producer, from the consumer, there's like this direct relationship and it's just freaking awesome it, can people pay bills and stuff with coin card or not really no, not yet not yet mm. um i think that would open us up to being a, a financial money service business mm. um, so the great thing about us right now is because we're an online store we're not a money service business so we don't need to take your you know selfie of your id um like most exchanges would kind of have to do so you can come to our site give your your name and your email boom done um no account needed yeah and so, and you also have and, private. and you but you know how there's like also these gift cards with credit cards Th those aren't available obviously right like you know how um, people you can buy like pre-loaded or debit they're kind of like you can put money on them N nothing like that right it's all just gift cards at merchants like is amazon and stuff like that available or not really yeah um wow. we actually we did we actually just launched i believe about a month and a half ago prepaid visa and mastercards so you know those ones that you go into Whoa. like a convenience store yeah. and you buy, you know, you buy $250, but they charge you like a $6 activation fee. Yep. Yep. We have, we have those available now. So you can buy those for crypto. So that kind of opens you up to any merchants that aren't going to take a gift card that you still want to interact with or Insane. even because they're physical, you can take those into any store where you're going to go purchase and just. And this product, wipe. again, it's only available to Canadians and Americans, not anyone else. This one is only available to Canadians. Right Canadians. Now. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. That's very exciting. Um, so, so, so Mike, before I move on to the coin card story, any, anything else you want to share, I guess, on a kind of like a personal journey note in terms of like your journey towards Bitcoin, uh, like kind of prior to and, and post in terms of, you know, there's a lot of new people getting into the space now. Um, but I don't know when you think back to those days, any, any, any other thoughts you want to maybe share on that front? Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I thought 2014 to 2017 was, you know, the prime of the fun. Um, just, you know, it kind of was just a bunch of nerds hanging out in basements, kind of just, you know, shooting the shit about Bitcoin. Um, after 2017, a lot more financial people got involved and, you know, sometimes they're a little boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, no offense to anybody out there, but, you know, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's no, why no. you know Dogecoin's so fun because yeah, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of um, Dogecoin. In 2018, we had a Dogecoin festival. Oh, Dogecoin! Um, no, I mean I heard about it, but I don't think I attended. Where was it? In Vancouver? It was in Vancouver, and it was. How crazy. many people showed up? Was it like oh, a it rave? I just picture a rave of like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was one night where it was basically just. A That's rave. exactly right. So, like, what else? <laughs> yeah, have you heard of um, Tom and Gary's decentralized dance party? Of course, of course. I, I think okay. I accidentally dropped in on, on one of their Zoom calls. Yeah. It was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, they, they basically had the, they were set up for Dogecoin and they had, uh, I think, a, like 50 to 100 boom boxes. Mm. And so everybody just grabs a boom box and we just roam the streets of Vancouver. And then you just, like, as you go and you're dancing, you're walking down the streets, people just join in because it's just fun, right? That is cool. You know, there's such a, um, like, vibrant, community in vancouver that you know has been there almost like since the beginning uh there's a pretty 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 intense community here in toronto like you said uh, maybe a little heavy on the finance side <laughs> um but everything in between it's like crickets i mean now alberta is making a bit of a stir with, with some of the guys out there you know but uh but i don't hear a lot you know if, if, if yeah if you have friends out there we should we should get some of them to share their stories but anyway so okay so that's fascinating um I think, I think, um, so, okay. So one of my main goals, like, is not just like, oh, let's just like, you know, shoot the shit. It's more just like, I, I think a lot of people are starting to get now. I mean, well, a lot of people isn't like I said, the richest people in the world, the Jack door, everyone's kind of like, okay, Bitcoin. Right. But everyone's talking about like the NGU factor, like, oh, number go up. Um, but I think there's a, there's another element to this, which I'm trying to demystify, which is this, it, this idea of, building on bitcoin where you can actually not just like buy bitcoin and hold it and whatever whatever and all that dollar cost average blah 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 hodl right that's all great or trading 
uh, but there's like more to it. It's like, you can actually, you don't need to like ask anyone. You could just like say, okay, I'm going to build a Bitcoin business. I mean, you, you obviously need to do it in a responsible way, but there's this element of building on it. Um, so, so, so curious how, as we kind of switch gears from your story to coin card, like what was, was there some like market opportunity that you saw? Or were you just like scratching your own itch? Was it like, I don't know, just like a brain fart of an idea one day at a party? Like how did, how did that happen? Um, so I think I actually saw some of the companies in the States that started doing this. Um, I believe Gift was the main one at the time, GYFT. Are they um, around I, anymore? That Wasn't that, that was Vinnie Lingham, right? Yeah, he sold it off, but I think yeah. they're still around. I don't okay, know what okay. they, I don't know. You don't hear about them as much, okay. No. Um, so at the time it was like, oh, okay, cool. Americans can, you know, buy gift cards with Bitcoin. And I was like, why can't Canadians, right? So I went and I looked and I couldn't find anybody that was doing this. So I was like, I'm going to do this. If nobody else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. Um, so then I think, I think I spent like a weekend just throwing up like the world's worst website, like just a couple of images of gift cards and like a bit pay integration. It was just kind of like, here, come buy our gift cards. We're trustworthy. Um, you know, and nobody, nobody believes you. They're like, oh, this guy's just a scam. Right. Um, but then we got one order, two orders, three orders, you know, people started being like, hey, this isn't a scam. I actually got my gift card. When, when sorry, 20? That was 2014. Mm. So we're actually, we're almost all at seven years in operation now, which is pretty Crazy. Big That's like an eternity in this space, man. Like nobody's <laughs> yeah. in this space for that long. Yeah. Um, especially with one company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So do good on you. Um, okay, so interesting. So you go, okay, there's a, uh, there's this opportunity here to do gift cards. Um, you throw up a website. Was there like a bit of a, like, did you put it on Reddit or I don't know? Did you tweet it out? Was it just tell your mom? Or was like, like, how did you get your first customer? <laughs> no, I think it was Reddit. I think we kind of yeah. went hard on Reddit. It was just mm. kind of like, okay, we got to find Bitcoiners. We got to go to Reddit. We got to go to Twitter. We got to just kind of place ourselves in everywhere when everybody's like, oh, how do I cash out? And I'm just like, okay, try this, try this. Um, and that's kind of, it was just basically like an internet guerrilla marketing, kind of just be everywhere you can think of being. Um, Bitcoin talk forums back in the day. Yeah, of course. we went hard on that forum. Of course, <laughs> um, who didn't? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it was just like, try and be everywhere and everywhere. Mm. Um, while also maintaining an under the radar type deal too, because um, at the time we weren't asking anybody's permission, mm. right? It was like, we were buying retail gift cards, marking them up and just being like, here, have this, we're gonna charge you 5% because that's our exchange fee. Um, but I mean, you do that and you're gonna piss off some people too. It's like the merchants are gonna be like, well, we don't know anything about Bitcoin. So that's the great thing too, is that you know, we kind of started under the radar. And as we got bigger, we got opportunities to talk to these merchants. We started talking to their suppliers, which led to conversations with them. So now we're pretty comfortable with a lot of the major companies in Canada. Um, they know what Bitcoin is. They don't necessarily want to interact with it, but they're cool with us interacting with it while selling their products. Interesting, interesting, fascinating. Okay, cool. So, and then what is that? I'm just curious, what does that growth story look like? Like, do you know, like, did you have some like landmarks like, oh, and this day we hit our first, I don't know, like 100 users or something? Like, do you, do you remember? Like, I remember the first time I was like, a thousand orders. I was like, this is amazing. We got a thousand orders. That was, I believe that was like 2015 or something. Um, and then from there, it was like a month later, 2,000 orders. <laughs> I was like, this is nuts. Um, so then, you know, I think we hit our peak in 2017 um, for dollar, dollar and orders kind of thing. But we, that was a crazy time. Like that was just like, everybody got rich and everybody was cashing out. Um, but we still had some pretty steady growth after that huge initial dip. Um, so it's been pretty good. I'd say like, we're growing at like a triple digits um, per year. Insane, right? Like what industry can see that? Yeah. Um, and and this year, sorry, the last like 12 months or so for you guys that like amidst all the craziness globally, it's been, it's been okay for you guys? Yeah, so I'd say like when the pandemic <clears throat> first hit, mm -hmm. like 
February, March. I think we took a bit of a dip because it was like you couldn't actually go to shop anywhere because everybody was just closing down. Like all the restaurants were closed. Everything was closed. Right, right. Um, but since then, uh, you know, people changed what they were doing. Um, so like instead of actual individual restaurants, people were buying Uber Eats, um, switching over to gift cards for grocery stores and things like that. So, I mean, people adapt. We adapted. So That's fantastic. Um interesting and then i so i assume uh so now you guys you said you launched in in, in america recently and then kind of like i guess what's and then how many people do you guys are you, are you able to, are you even open to sharing stuff like that or i mean it's okay if you want to keep that secret no uh, users we keep secret no i mean uh, uh like people headcount sorry yeah i still i would i would say we keep that one secret cool but you guys are all based in vancouver mostly or yeah, yeah. cool um yeah so we've got a we all work from home um got a small team that works from home uh yeah but mainly mainly based out of vancouver and and you know like i mean uh what is that saying like it's right, right starting an entrepreneur starting a business is like chewing glass and staring into the abyss um <laughs> so start starting a bitcoin business is kind of like i guess i don't even know how to describe it if, if that's what just a normal business is like but um but yeah uh, i don't know yeah i was gonna say sorry go ahead I uh, just, I was going to say, like, I'm gray. I'm, I'm actually pretty young still. Like, I'm losing my hair. Like, it's, like, gone up here and back here. Like, <laughs> He's actually 12, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm only 36. Okay, like, that's not so bad, dude. I know, but it's, like, I'm, like, I look like I'm 50 sometimes. Like, <laughs> I actually, I went on this app that, like, you know, those emoji apps where you, like, scan your face? And it, like, it scanned me in as, like, a 60-year-old man. I was, like... <laughs> what the hell <laughs> that's that's yeah yeah um i think i think bitcoin will do that to you too right it ages yeah. you a bit um uh, um but no i was gonna ask you is is like what uh any 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 wise words of wisdom for people out there like you know i mean like i said now it's almost easy because like to some extent you know when you have like the richest wealthiest powerful people on earth like ray dalio and every day it's like some guy it's like all of a sudden we don't look so crazy around the dinner table at christmas right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so but but uh but still but still it's hard right I, was I don't know i was kind of alluding to some of the stuff that's happening in india before our call i mean it's like sometimes it feels like you have the best days on earth followed by the worst days and then followed oh, yeah, by the even better days and it's just like i don't know but any, any thoughts on kind of like how to maintain your sanity through this <laughs> you just you gotta have fun man like <laughs> bitcoin is fun that, that's what it comes down to um, and you can't, you can't go any more invested than you're willing to lose too. Like, obviously there are people like me who are all in and I'm like, whatever, if I lose it all tomorrow, I'll find another job. I'll be happy. Um, but you know, there's people out there obviously who are like, I'm going to sell my house or mortgage my house and put it all in the Bitcoin or, you know, I heard ripples pumping today. I'm going to put it all in the ripple. <laughs> like, no, that's a bad idea. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Doge, maybe. You know, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, if, if I think the secret is if you can lose it all and walk away tomorrow and be happy, you know, and you've had a wild ride doing it, then you're good. If you're going to lose it all and like contemplate, you know, offing yourself, then no, you're too deep into it, right? Yeah. Um, hey, you know, and I was also going to say is, is that you know, again, I won't mention, you know, the companies, but there's been some morally questionable, perhaps businesses, famous ones coming out of Vancouver. How have you maintained this, yeah. like, uh, this straight and narrow kind of like, you know, Talk doing the Jerry. good. You said it, not me. Yeah. And then the buddies at Einstein. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. Uh, but no, just curious, man, like, I there, this place is this 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 industry attracts the best of them and the worst of them, um, yeah. and I find like if the only thing you're gunning for and optimizing for is making money, you're kind of screwed off the bat, right? It seems like what you said the having fun is is kind of important, but I don't know any question any any comments around just like keeping a, a moral compass in this place. I ask this as I look at the Doges behind you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm loving it, by the way. All these dogs looking at me. It's a little creepy, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> if the eyes moved, it'd be even way creepier. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, 
I don't know, man. You just you kind of got to do your own research. That's what mm. we're dealing with. Like I got burned in Quadriga. Like I had money there. Everybody I know got burned. Um, but there was there was telltale signs. Like we knew that this exchange was having problems for months. But we we still kept using it. And part of the problem was they had the highest rates for selling in Canada. You know, but you couldn't get your money. So what good is selling at five thousand above market if you can't get your money? Mm. And everybody had that agreed, and they were like, "Oh, well, we got to try." Um, I don't know. From our standpoint, we don't t- we don't touch your money. Like we obviously, there's a little bit of a gap where we accept a payment and then we send you your card, but that's usually two confirmations, so like twenty minutes. Um, but we've made it very clear that we don't want to hold your money. We don't want to have a wallet in place in our system. We don't want to be your custodian. Um, and you shouldn't ever have a custodian kind of thing. So a lot of the times when people send money from exchanges to us, they'll be like, well, why am I short paid? And it's like, well, because your exchange took a fee from you. And then we use that as an opportunity to be like, Hey, by the way, become your own custodian. Like we use coin cards as a tool to educate people in mass to how to be better Bitcoiners. Um, Yeah. And I've always kind of said that morally, like my goal is to make myself obsolete. Like I don't want coin cards to exist because I think merchants should just take Bitcoin. And so the day when merchants will just in mass accept Bitcoin, we no longer are like needed service. Then I can just pack up and go home. And that's my ultimate goal. So, I mean, I've kind of built this company on, yeah, I'm going to make money because that's, I'm not going to do it for free. I need to live. But ultimately, I don't want to be a service that is needed kind of thing. So our goal is advocacy, um, which is why we talk to merchants and stuff and just try to ease them into it. And one day, you know, you're going to get big guys. They're going to be like, yeah, cool. I'm going to start taking Bitcoin. Um, But I think custody is a big thing. If you have somebody holding your money, they're going to take off with it at some point, probably. Yeah, custody is one of those really, really tricky things, man. And and I sometimes even question, like, the, the, the things that we kind of default to in our, you know, as Bitcoiners. Oh, I just go buy a ledger. <laughs> and then you hear what happened with ledger recently, right? It's like what do you like it's it's hard it's getting hard um you know and 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 then nothing yeah. is you know no, I, super like 100 percent. and there's always attack vectors it was, and it's scary it was the it's other day scary. i was actually i was moving some <laughs> dogecoin because it was pumping so it was like off my hardware wallet but then their node went down and it's like well shit like i don't have an extra node and i have no knowledge of how to like connect a node to my hardware wallet for dogecoin because dogecoin nobody uses dogecoin <laughs> so that's like you know if those even with hardware wallets where they say you're you know you're your own self custody if their nodes go down there aren't going to be people out there who know how to transact so like you said like even using hardware wallets sometimes is sketchy and then you know you okay then you go okay well casa and uh you know unchained capital and it's like okay we tried multi-sig like it's it's fun it's as like a geek but like for everyone my point is is i think that's i think that's both bad and good in the sense that i think there's also an opportunity for people to innovate and keep making i i love those projects by the way i've I've interviewed uh, jameson and um but but i do think that you know i think anytime we think oh we've got it figured out hey do you know the cold card guys rodolfo yeah. yeah yeah big fans of those guys they're out of Toronto they're they're, they're one of those like projects again that you know have been around forever oh, there we go yeah. <laughs> hey 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 <laughs> um I love that I, where's my I gotta pop my actually here somewhere. I just but, got the uh, Lockbox yeah. mini um two days no ago. Yeah. how fun. is it how much is it it's cheap right or cheaper it's cheaper it's still Wait, it's pretty have... pricey <laughs> what is it how much is it I think it was like three or four hundred bucks Okay, but I thought it was. I thought the yeah, other one's like, 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 it's like a couple grand. Yeah, a thousand is it? Like okay. That. And how do you feel? You must feel special. I mean, like I feel like once I one day when I buy that, I will feel it's special. It's fun. Uh, he did a pretty good job with the API. Um, mm. So I've actually got it set up that it shows our like the coin card spot rate. So we just hey, yeah, we got cool. it up on the wall, and it's like okay, cool. What's our rate right now, kind of thing. I like that. I like that. So you. So it's like. Uh, Open source or no, maybe not. The API is pretty powerful. 
I don't think it's open. Source, Beautiful. Yeah, it's fun. Okay. Hey, but Cold Card is open source, though, right? I don't know. I don't think I've ever. Actually I thought they were. It probably uh, is. Yeah, I like the fact that Rodolfo and these guys are burning their uh, their addresses, right, <laughs> of their customers, because that's uh, that's a bit scary. Um, with what happened. Anyways, anyways, okay, let's go back, I guess. Okay, so I guess, are we good on the ledger, on the ledger, on the kind of the coin cards story and anything else you want to share on that front uh, before we maybe shift gears to the, the next part? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there's there's some interesting points in um, coin cards history. I mean, like, if you guys heard of, uh, or have you heard of BTC Pay server? I think everybody. Of course, of course, yeah. yes, of course. So interestingly enough, we were their first user. Cool. Like first ever user, yeah. Um, so back in 2017, we kind of we hooked up with Nicholas. Um, we were the first major retailer in Canada to accept Lightning. Um, Dude. Okay. Yeah. Keep so, going, please. <laughs> um, you know, we we started accepting Monero. I think we were the only gift card service to accept Monero. So privacy is huge with us. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just, we're trying to be a company of firsts and a company of innovation in trying to service the customer. So like with Lightning, BTC Pay Server, we saw like, we knew they were going to be huge. It just, yeah. Hmm. Crazy. You're just a dog. <laughs> yeah. Doge. <laughs> <laughs> You're just a doge. I love it, dude. I love it. I love hearing stories like this. So, uh, okay. Wow. Lightning. I mean, uh, what else, right? What else? Uh, you guys seem like you really have figured out. Um, okay. So maybe let's switch gears a bit. I mean, if there's nothing else you want to share on that front. Uh, and again, like, well, we'll get to some of those points later on. Okay. So the next question is, is what is one thing, and you, you strike me as a as a Bitcoiner in Doge clothing, uh, you know, that's your, that's your, uh, that's your, what's it called? Um, uh, Trojan horse. Yeah. <laughs> you're memeing your way. Hey, you know what? Elon Musk, he was initially on the Dogecoin vibe, yeah. right? Now it's. Uh, oh, um, he so. said something last night. I don't, were you in that? Um, I wasn't, no. I was, I was doing some other stuff. Yeah. I got a, I'm, I'm pretty busy nowadays with the India stuff, but uh, I, I've been hearing about it. It was pretty cool. No. Yeah, it was, but he said something yesterday about Dogecoin and I wanted to find it if I could. Oh. Are you on clubhouse? No, I don't have a Android or I don't have a, you don't I, need an Android I, I, iPhone. iPhone, yeah, I iPhone. An iPhone. Okay. 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 Yeah. So, okay. So he said this, the most ironic and entertaining outcome is most likely. The most ironic is that Doge becomes the global crypto of the future. <laughs> so he's kind of so just maybe like, he's like, this is so crazy that maybe it'll just become huge. Don't doubt it. Don't <laughs> doubt it. I mean, do not question the means, man. Yeah. There's something about, you know, I remember my, my first job in this Bitcoin space was in 2012 for a company called Buttercoin. Okay. And and it was like my, I went from robotics, eight years, nine years in robotics, selling robots, to like universities that were like super bureaucratic and took like a year, year and a half to close a deal um, to like working for a Silicon Valley based like Bitcoin exchange. And it was night and day. And that was my first like real kind of where my job depended on like understanding memes. And I remember I was sitting there, I was like, like what what are memes exactly like i kind of get it but i kind of don't like it's just these pictures with white writing and like what is it and it's like oh my god i mean we've uh, seen that in the last week we've seen basically like meme warfare with the the whole wall street bets thing going on and insane 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 i think janet yellen didn't she write an article today saying it's like financial terrorism <laughs> it's just a bunch of millennials posting memes <laughs> Financial terrorism, I guess. Yeah, okay. Well, that's why, they're, that's why they want to ban it in India. Jesus, it's terrible, man. There's like, there's definitely something going on. I mean, something, I don't know. I don't know. Something doesn't feel right. But um, okay, what is one thing that you believe to be true that most others in Bitcoin may disagree with you on or would disagree with you on? I would say there is a lot of regret out there with spending your Bitcoin early. I don't know if you've heard like the pizza guy, like, oh, what an idiot. He spent $10 million on a pizza kind of thing. But at the end of the day, he would have spent 20 bucks fiat that he could have converted into Bitcoin. So, I mean, there's a huge stigma around spending your Bitcoin. And obviously I see that every day from being somebody who promotes use of Bitcoin. 
Um, but I think, you know, if you're going to spend your Bitcoin, just replace it. Like, it's easy. Like, try and move away from that fiat system because the fiat system is not working. Um, and the only way to do that is to kind of go a little deeper into Bitcoin. You know, obviously, like I had said before, don't go all in to the point where you're not comfortable losing it. But, you know, the more you play with Bitcoin, the more you're going to feel comfortable with it. And the more, you know, the more experience you'll have with it when it does come to be the global currency, if it does. Yep, 100%, man. Well, not 100%, but, you know, people should gauge how much percentage they should have a Bitcoin exposure. But 100% in yeah. terms of, I agree with what you said. I, I do think, uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think that's a great one. Um, and it obviously resonates with your business model. But I, I also feel that, you know, there's this narrative amongst Bitcoiners that, oh, nobody wants to spend their Bitcoin, 10 million percent growth. No, that's exactly why people would want to spend their Bitcoin. It's yeah. like, because it goes up and it's like, it's not free money. But it's just like, you know, money you didn't have. And, and I, I don't know, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of also giving away Bitcoin too, right? Like not just for buying stuff, just giving it like the people, your friends, your family, even if it's 10 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, it's like that 10 bucks might be worth a lot later. Yeah. Um, and so you know, I, I mean, yeah. I, I'm going to say like, I think crypto Twitter is a small, loud minority of the thought base. And that's because those are the people who are spending every day in Bitcoin. But you get a lot of people who bought Bitcoin three years ago and they just found their wallet and they're like, you know what, I'm going to spend a little bit. You know, the majority of Bitcoin users are not typically on crypto Twitter. So I feel like the crypto Twitter voice doesn't actually represent the majority of Bitcoin users, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's partly partially why I'm doing this too, man. This like whole daily, I mean, everyone asks me like, what are you doing? Like, why are you wasting your time? You only get like a hundred views when you post your shit. Like you, you get all the best, best guests, but nobody comes like, dude, it'll, it'll happen. You know, it'll happen. But no, I agree with you. I think, I think, uh, I think that the, the story is not captured on Twitter. That's for sure. And yeah. we're in a bit of an echo chamber and, and uh, I mean, you didn't ask me, but my pet peeve would be just like how, um, how just, I don't know. I think I find Bitcoiners, I love Bitcoiners to death and I kind of like that they are the way they are, but they're, they're, I find a lot of them are very close minded and, you know, it's like at the end of the day, if we're about freedom, people should get to do whatever the hell they want. Like, you know, we should love them for that. And then, and then work backwards from there. And, you know, if, you know, whatever. Um, okay. So I like that one. And I also think, I think you're doing great work because I, I like I said, I, I think once you start thinking, okay, I'm going to go more and more and more into Bitcoin, the inevitable question is, well, how am I going to buy, you know, steak from Superstore? How am I going to put gas in the car? How am I going to go buy my, you know, toys at Amazon? Well, you got, you know, you got coin card. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. And so, and once you make that connection a few times, then in your brain, you're like, oh, wait, like this is money. Like this is like, you know, something yeah, that exactly. I can rely on. Um, okay, man. I like that. So a couple of just, I guess, more, uh, I don't know, uh, just questions that I normally like to ask and just curious about your thoughts. AI, is that something that, I don't know, comes across your radar? You said you're like a computer guy and all of that. Um, yeah, curious. I, I would say I don't think it's there yet, but I'm scared when it's going to get there. I'm one of those people that's like, we're going to create Skynet and we're going to be hooped. <laughs> like, <laughs> Have you played around with open AI? No, I haven't. I just, I'm it's, not, I'm not technical enough to play with it. So I'm just, I'm scared of what will come out of it. You'd be surprised because I'm, I mean, I'm, I studied electrical engineering and blah, 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 but I, I'm not super technical, but I, I can, I can, because it's, you just, you interact with it using natural language, like meaning like English. Okay. <laughs> so it's no programming. You just talk to it. Uh, I just got access to it. It's pretty interesting. It's more like a toy, but I don't, I don't think it's going to take over the world anytime soon, but I definitely, uh, I definitely find uh, AI, you know, interesting. Um, what else? What else? Anything else, Mike, you want to share uh, with uh, with people out there? I mean, there's a couple other questions I wanted to ask you as well, but but anything on the Bitcoin front, on the, you know, just coin cards front, on the entrepreneurship journey front, and uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I I think we've pretty much gone through everything. Um, we yeah, get it? I, there's been a few things I've been um, kind of branching out into personally. Um, we bought a few 3D printers for the office. Um, that's yeah, cool. 
Which one you got? Prusa. Yeah, okay. So and then what are you what are you printing? Just random just things. Just random things. We actually we just started printing uh, shopping cart coins that are in Bitcoin format. So like when you go to a superstore, okay. you can just pop one of those in. Cool. Yeah. Uh, cool. Just little things like three D printers. Yeah. Are you into drones? <laughs> um, I have one, but I don't use it very often. It like dies within like five minutes. So it's just like, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you go all the way out there and you're just like, yeah. And now there's all these rules about it. You have to pretty much become a pilot to even fly one. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, okay. So actually one last question. Last question before we kind of just uh, wrap up is, is another topic that's not really like Bitcoin related, but I like to touch on mainly because my spidey senses say that uh, there's probably a lot of people out there that uh struggle with anxiety and just like with all the bullshit over the last year you know stuck at home and da, 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 uncertainty um you know do you have any hacks like i don't know jumping jacks uh, journaling long walks by the beach i have no idea what's what's your thing man uh, i don't know man i'm going to start doge yeah, okay doge. You're, you're you're over the top okay so um <laughs> yeah i don't know i started um i think the other day i started trying to hook up with people on VR. Um, so I've got a VR headset, a, a Vive. So I've kind of tried to- How's that? Some, uh, it's okay. It's it's weird. I, I don't like walking around, like talking to people that aren't there, if that makes sense. Especially when I have other people in the room, it just, it's a little weird. Yeah, then um, you're gonna love, but, uh, you're gonna love Clubhouse. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I I just want all this to be over. I don't, I don't entirely trust our government is doing the right thing right now. Um, I mean, as bad as China is, I feel like they nipped it in the butt. Two weeks, boom, everybody in, stay inside, over and done with kind of thing, right? Like, mm. I, just, I, I feel like our government's just screwing around. Like the vaccines, I didn't want to get a vaccine because I'm like, I'll let other people fucking try that first. <laughs> that was a, a rushed situation. And then it's like, okay, we don't have enough vaccines. We're going to like start changing the rules on these vaccines and just, I don't know, schools, you know, they're saying schools are safe. I got kids in school. I don't feel like they're safe there. No, I just, no, I just, it's, I think it's driving everybody I know nuts. And yeah, I just, I want this shit to be over so I can start traveling again. <laughs> yeah. Are you a big travel bug? I mean, you, you, you like traveling? I, I like the fact that there's Bitcoiners all over the world. Right. And you're connected to them somehow. Like, I, th I think I was in Chicago once and I was like, okay, I've got an afternoon. I just tweet, who's in Chicago? And then I got a couple of replies of like, oh, this guy's in Chicago. This guy's in Chicago. So I like, okay, let's go for lunch. Right. Like, yeah. And then when you go to the conferences too, it's just like, it, it's just, you get together with all your old friends, even though mm -hmm. you might not have met some of them ever before. Right. And you have the best mm -hmm. time and it's great. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, by the way, I was going to say is, uh, you know, with all that like meetup and event stuff we used to do back in the day, we're actually seriously thinking of kind of bringing them back to life uh, digitally for now until, you know, uh, life goes back to normal. And then, you know, then then start doing events again. I was kind of on the fence, like, oh, I don't think I'll do them again and this and that. Now I'm like, oh, man, just like itching to, to do events again and, you know, just be around people and like parties afterwards and just hanging out and being around, like you said, people, like-minded people. I think I, I really yeah, missed that, definitely. that's for sure. Um, okay, Mike, so where do people find out more about you? Like, I guess, like, you know, where's your, like, I don't know if you tweet or blog or whatever, if you have a website and then also, you know, your company, can you share that stuff one more time just so people can Yeah, get so it? it's coincards.com or .ca. Um, Either one goes to the same place. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm usually just shit posting, um, talking about Dogecoin. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much where you can find me. Um, Coincards.com. We're open 24 um, seven. Hey hey yeah. hey. <laughs> yeah man it's always fun hey dude well thanks again for you know coming to the event sorry about charlie oh, it wasn't my fault blame the border yeah, people oh, oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um but yeah i know we'll uh but once again once all this stuff's over we'll, we'll make sure we get him up here and everybody else uh you, you came with home with max kaiser did you come because you said you came on don tap's car i thought max was I at think that so, one too yeah I, I spent a lot of time out in the hallway because we were we were selling hardware right 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 time and it was crazy. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Cool, man. Well, again, thanks again for coming on. And uh, yeah, anytime you want to come back, you know, I mean, this one was more about like your story, but I'm just not ready to go down to, you know, shoot the shit and just talk about whatever uh, current events. But thanks again, Mike. Really, really appreciate yeah. it. Hang around for like 10 seconds. I'm just going to let this right. one, uh, I'm going to kill this video.